Brazilian birthday cake, eat it, and you're gonna love it. And I was like, wow, it's the lazy way to do it. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be totally fine. We're just gonna keep a positive mindset around here. So good. Hello everyone. It's my birthday. It's my birthday weekend. It was my birthday yesterday. And today is a beautiful day in Florida, so I was enjoying it outside. Although, super rude of nature to be attacking me as I'm merely existing in her presence. I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes are kind of swollen. It's just pollen season has started. That's not the point of this video. Today is my birthday. Like I said, we are making cake because you know what the downside of owning your own bakery is? You have to make your own birthday cake. We're going out tonight. Uh, a few of my friends and I are gonna go to Three Daughters Brewing to watch a band play. Let's get to making that cake. But first, I gotta put on some clothes, so uh, I'll be right back. Much better. So first things first, the hair's gonna go up because that's when you know we mean business. We're gonna be making my favorite cake, which might surprise you because I have been very vocal about the fact that chocolate is the best kind of flavor for anything. But my favorite cake of all time is carrot cake. But not just any carrot cake, Brazilian carrot cake. Now how is Brazilian carrot cake different than American carrot cake? That's a great question, thank you for asking. Also, poops. They make the hairdo look better. We gotta look cute when we do the baking. It's a fact, it comes out better, look it up. Science. American carrot cake usually has little pieces of carrot and is made with cream cheese frosting. I don't want to offend anyone, but I think that's gross. I, mm, nope, not a fan. Brazilian carrot cake, it's more like yellow cake. It's still made with carrots, but they disappear in there because if you're gonna use a vegetable in a cake, it should probably disappear. It also has a chocolate ganache frosting, which is the absolute best. It's incredible. If you go to any Brazilian home, you will find a carrot cake with chocolate frosting. And I usually don't even tell people it's carrot cake because that might be divisive. So it's just, it's birthday cake. It's a typical Brazilian birthday cake. Eat it and you're gonna love it. So let's make it. I need an apron. And I actually treated myself to a new apron from Headley and Bennett that very conveniently arrived on my birthday. So, ooh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Let me get closer to you. Look at this print. Isn't this the most adorable thing you've ever seen in your life? This is not a sponsored post. This was not gifted. I bought this with my own money, but let me back it up while I make my point. I love Headley and Bennett aprons because they're actually good. These guys, they're made well. These straps won't fall off. The straps are very long too, so they can go around and tie in the front, which is how I like to wear it. And they have pockets. So we got apron, hoops, hair, and ingredients. Let's finally get this cake going. So first we're just gonna mix our dry ingredients as usual with our vegan cake recipe. So I got flour and I got sugar. Then we have baking soda and salt. And yes, I'm looking at a recipe because I'm a professional baker, I'm not a machine. I'm not a computer. I still need to write down my recipes. Two teaspoons of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt. That's it for the dry ingredients. So let's just thoroughly mix this guy and then we're gonna get it set it aside and we're gonna start working on the wet ingredients that involves the carrots. Next thing we're gonna do is deal with the carrots. So if you have those beautiful carrots that you get at the farmer's market that are like big and thick and wonderful, good for you. I have these sad little things that I got at Publix. This is the best I could get. So if you have the big ones, two of those will be fine. I have sad little ones, so I'm using four. So we're gonna peel these guys and take this top off. Now eventually we're gonna have to put these guys in the blender with the rest of the wet ingredients. And I would not say that my blender is like the most powerful blender that ever blended. So I'm gonna cut these guys probably in thirds as well to help the process. Now we're gonna put all of the wet ingredients in there. So half a cup of canola oil. 
Every time I do this, I feel like I'm pouring gasoline out. If you don't have canola oil, you can use vegetable oil or any kind of just clear, tasteless oil. And if you want to use another form of non-dairy milk, it's totally up to you. Just go with something that's, again, tasteless. You don't want to interfere with the taste of the cake. You can go with oat milk, soy milk. Just make sure it's the non-flavored variety. One and a half cups. In you go. And one fourth of a cup of vinegar. That's going to give us our rise. I know it sounds weird to put vinegar in a cake. Trust the process. I've done this a thousand times. The vinegar is going to react with the baking soda that we have in there because it's acidic and it's going to make the cake rise. It will disappear. I promise you won't taste it. All right. Now we're going to close this. There we go. And we're going to blend it until it's just one smooth mixture. I think we're done now. We're just going to pour the liquid mixture into that dry mix that we did earlier. And now we fold it in. So this cake is a recipe that I veganized from my childhood, just like most of the recipes on this channel. When it came to eating vegetables, ironically, like I would not eat a vegetable. So I remember being at this birthday party and they had this yellow cake with chocolate frosting and I ate like three pieces of it. And then I told my mom, I was like, this is amazing. Like you should make this kind of cake next time. And then she told me it had carrots in it. And I was like, wow. Vegan vegetables have come a long way. I'm okay with them now. I don't particularly love them in my desserts. I think carrot cake this way is the only way that I still will incorporate them. Not for me. Although pumpkin pie, mmm, yes. If I'm forgetting something that's really good with vegetables in it, let me know in the comments below. All right, this is all folded in. So now we're just gonna put this in a sheet pan. So I went ahead and preheated the oven to 350. And here's the deal with the sheet pan. Yeah. My nine inch pans are in a box on top of a shelf that would require me great effort and a ladder to get to. And I don't feel like doing that on my birthday. So instead, I'm just using, I think it's a quarter sheet pan and I'm lining it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a flat sheet and then I'm going to cut it in half and make it a two layer cake, makes sense. I'm gonna get in every little corner of this pan. And with that, the sheet cake is ready to go. Don't tell anyone I did that. All right, now that the cake is done, it needs to chill completely before we add the chocolate and frost it and complete it. So let's take a break. I took a power nap. So I'm sorry if I'm looking a little scruffy. We are powered through. We're gonna finish this cake. To make the ganache, all we're gonna need is some vegan chocolate chips. And I'm using coconut milk. Usually I use coconut cream to make the ganache, but mine is expired. So we're working with what we got. Coconut milk will do. Give it a good shake ahead of time because you know coconut milk always separates. We're gonna put this in a bowl with some of the chocolate chips. And we're gonna put this in the microwave and we're gonna heat it up until it's all a nice chocolatey mixture. So our ganache is ready. Now we have to cut that cake and stack it. My camera stopped filming because the card was full and we just do not have time to go deal with that. So we've moved it to the iPhone in case you see a difference. That's why. When I used to make cakes for the bakery, I made so many cakes and I made so much buttercream. I kind of put me off of buttercream, possibly forever. For this cake, we are not making buttercream. We're going straight with the ganache. Is it going to have little bumps and lumps in like a side that's a little taller than the other? Yes. Is that a problem? I'm okay with it. We do need to cut, this is like a little bit bigger than the uh, than the box. So we're gonna cut like two inches off. And now we're just gonna frost this. And now I'm just gonna finish off by topping it with some chocolate chips because these are great for hiding little imperfections as well. And you know what? It's gonna be dark at the brewery. A good cake is a good cake. Who cares what it looks like? Now we're just gonna clean this up and box it up. Boom, we're done. Now I'm gonna put this cake in the fridge so that this chocolate firms up. And then we're gonna frost this little piece that's left over here and we're gonna try it out. All right, so essentially we got like a little mini piece over here that I put together. So good. 
you absolutely cannot taste the carrot in here at all it, but it's a super moist light cake but it's better than yellow cake better than carrot cake it's absolutely my favorite cake so happy birthday to me now i gotta go get ready and then take these to my friends so we can start celebrating cheers Nice, Daddy. Good job.